reasons why that album was so slept on. Because we chase the popular mm -hmm. and leave the authentic behind. And only to have to double back to the authentic because the popular doesn't last long. Just think about how many, just think about from 20, we'll say from 2011 till now, how many one hit wonder songs have you heard? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to our platform, your show. I'm your boy, Drew. I'm always joined by the second half of the show. GQ Nesto, how you doing today? What it do, what it do? What it do, what it do? That's it, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, LA's wild. LA I ain't gonna lie, LA's wild. You know what I mean? Hurricane coming. Oh yeah, hey, that shit. When my landlord sent me an email, that shit changed everything. I was like, oh, hell no, this shit is real. I didn't even know that shit was a, a Hillary. I was like, oh, here here goes another hoax, you know, trying to. who names the hurricane. Yeah, that's what I was trying to figure out, but uh -huh, yeah. For sure. Hey, well, ladies and gentlemen in the studio today, we have a dynamic producer, artist combo, straight out of Texas, who combine their talents like some like some apple pie with some ice cream on, vanilla hey. ice cream on top, you know what I'm saying? That, <laughs> hey, that be hitting hard, right? Um, like a painter in a black canvas, um, or like some burn-ins and some ice cold beer, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> On a nice summer day, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Everybody getting hungry right now. Um, but they stepped onto the court and they called next, ladies and gentlemen. And to usher them into this game, into the platform, I, I definitely think they're the ones to watch. And I, I miss, I wish, it's not going to I wish. It's going to happen, guys. Y'all going to see them. Mm -hmm. All right? Speak it into existence. But ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the game out of Texas, Tim Nix and Killer Tex. How y'all doing right now? Yo, appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all for having us, man. For appreciate sure, for sure. For how was, Tim, how was the flight? <laughs> 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 Let's talk about it. Oh, uh, it was, we, we rode Spirit Airlines. Spirit yeah. I know somebody who likes spirit. I like spirit. Did too. you have to hold somebody else's baby? No, because I'm not doing it. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it was it was cool. I mean, it was eventful in in a way, and you know, kind of slipped through everything. Pretty much took a long nap, and, and nobody complained about me snoring. So I guess it was good. It was good. Hey, it's good <laughs> spine therapy. You know what I mean? You oh, were man. straight the whole time. Yeah, you know what I mean? was, cause they got. You them. can't lean back in spirit. You can't. <laughs> no. The, the, oh, the seats don't even adjust. No, no. no you got to you gotta correct yourself. Bro, <laughs> I had to wake up in between my naps and adjust my legs. You know, you got you to gotta move around. You got to shimmy. Because you get, you get stiff. You be paused. You be stuck. So, What's up? Know. I feel you. What about you, Killer? What was the, how was the flight for you? Spooky. Spooky. Is this your first time in Cali? Yeah, first time flying too. Oh, oh. bro, I was, I was stiff. The whole flight, I was like, you prayed the sinner's prayer. Oh God, if this is my day. I said it backwards. <laughs> for sure, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let's talk about how did it all get started, Tim? I know you was the MC. Let's not, you know, saying so we can know how this is. Killer, you the producer. Tim, you the MC. Mm -hmm. How did you get started, Tim? I mean, I'm sorry, Tim. No, I'm right, Tim. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, it was poetry. It was poetry and it was the BMG CDs. So I'm pretty sure everybody in here is pretty much in their early 30s, maybe late 30s. So inside like Ebony magazines, any kind of magazine, they would always have the BMG offers where you pay five cent for 10 CDs. For sure. So for me, it was like, okay, my mama is never gonna buy me Tupac, All Eyes On Me. I'll never get that. Now this little Will Smith CD, she might buy it. She might get the Will Smith, <laughs> but I don't want the Will Smith. I want this Pac and I want this Wu-Tang CD. I want this, this not Wu-Tang, excuse me, the Raekwon. It was the Raekwon only built for Cuban links and it was the Iron Man. So, you know, like any normal kid would do, I decided, okay, I'm gonna take it in my own hands. I'm just gonna forge their name. So I did it once with, for my mama. So you was doing illegal things to get, get music. Is that what <laughs> hey, you're you saying right do, now on yeah. national, national television? 
fuck national TV. But anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> now nah, I'm just bullshitting. But now, nah, um, pretty much, I I just I took a chance and um, I used their name, and of course I got a whipping for it. You know, like normal kids get whipped <laughs> because a bill comes and you know you try to hide it. And you know, my mom was like, I was doing laundry. What is this bill? One hundred and twenty-five dollars mm-hmm. from BMG. Who is BMG, Mama? I don't know. Hey, but hold up, hold up. Will you do it again? Fucking right. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I do it okay. again. I pay it for it this time. <laughs> but you know what? I what I find funny is is uh, uh, you know what I'm saying I was hollering at you on the phone for a little bit, um, and you was you you missing the CD that you got though. What's, what, what, what? Why you didn't bring up the Tevin Campbell CD? Ah, that boy what, tried to do what? it. I, yeah, I did. Why you, why you like, bring yo, that up? That's I got the Tevin Campbell. Yeah, I got yeah. the Tevin because Tevin was he was cool then. Before he, you know, he got real zesty. Okay, you know? was you singing along? Nah, no. You, you were sliding out. Listen. Oh y'all call her. <laughs> y'all try to play me, man. Y'all try to play me for real. And then y'all did it with serious face. Like, were you sliding out? I'm like, whoa, hold on. No, no, no. You know, Tevin, Tevin had a unique voice. He just was zesty. And shout out to Tevin Campbell, you know, because, you know. But um, it was Tevin Campbell, Iron Man, uh, uh, Ghostface Killer Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Raekwon, uh, only built for Cuban leaks. Will Smith, Big Willie style, and it was Tupac, All Eyes on Me. Which the Tupac All Eyes on Me CD was like thirty two dollars alone by itself. No, it was. You know what I'm saying? Know. Like that was that's what was crazy because you order the shit and it say five cent, but you wind up paying twenty six dollars and five cent for you know what I'm saying? So those cds kind of well not not all of those cds but the Pac and the wu-tang directly affected me because it gave me a sense of okay i can say whatever i want to say i can say whatever i want to say in ways that other people can understand and other people may feel but don't necessarily feel they have the power to stand up and say so you know i started out writing poetry I wrote poetry for a couple of years, and then fast forward maybe 99, 2000, I started writing music. And uh, in the midst of that, you know, I started kind of finding myself as an artist, and it took some time to find myself because other people will always tell you what they think you should be, what you could be, what you can be, and what you can't be. They use all four of those to make you be something that they think you should be. You know what I'm saying? So you have to continue to keep your individuality and be who you are and not let other people's opinions directly affect you. It's cool to accept an opinion, but it's not cool to take the perception of an opinion and apply it to your life because that's not necessarily who you are or what okay. you're going to be. Your path your path is there, but who you are is not there. You have to go through your path in order to, for people to be able to understand why you are like you are. You know what I'm saying? So that was kind of my introduction. It was poetry, you know, school programs no, it, also. It's kind of similar to like what we was talking about in the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? It's like what works now so if you say yo i'm about to be an artist you know what i'm saying painter yeah. right you look at who's popping right now so you just if you're giving that opinion to somebody who wants to get into that field you're only thinking about what's popping right now yeah so it's like oh you should be like this or you yeah. should paint like this or you mm-hmm. should write like this so that's True. that's kind of where where it comes from but no nah, but killer hey um who are some of your first musical inspirations Man, Herbie Hancock, uh, DJ Screw, Spice One, Pac, UGK. Oof, well, it's a lot. But uh, I think my first tape I ever had was uh, America's Most Nightmare. What uh, Ice Cube, right? Yeah, yeah. I I never heard Gangsta Rap until I heard that album. My cousin. My older cousin, he like 10 years older than me, he used to come in with all these CDs and stuff. And I used to look like, oh, what's this? What's this? And I used to go sneak and listen. I wasn't supposed to listen to it. You was know? you on the BMG too? Yeah, all that. 12 CDs for a cent? 
<laughs> oh no, man! I didn't get a chance to do that. My grandma knew kids. No, um, yeah, I, man. One day, you know, the, the tape was just jamming, man. So I, man, I stole my cousin tape, bro. Cassette. Started listening to it. Man, I had it for like a good three months before you find out I had it. He, mm. he kicked my ass. <laughs> but that made me fell in love with hip hop, like stuff like Ice Cube, Pop, and then when DJ Screw came in, I started learning more about. It. L.A. culture through him. The first screw tape song I ever heard was Spice One rolling with my motherfucking strap. Mm. He made me want to buy a 45, huh? Bro. Immediately. (laughs) (laughs) But it's like I met him and screw at the same time. That's the first ever song I ever heard. And then when I started hearing the chops with the syllables, and I'm like, that's like double gangster. So I'm like, woo. So I just started collecting tapes at school and all kinds of stuff, man. Then I got into DJing because of Screw. And then that kind of converted into music year later, like learning how to do beats and stuff. For sure. Like I just started winging it, bro. Like, well, you have to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing to it. It's almost like you it, taking a wire hanger and you trying to turn your TV to the right channel. Mm-hmm. That's basically how I learned how to do music. It wasn't no learning as a kid, studying music. I'm just winging it. Like, started with a Dell computer, bro. Like, dang, was that the green screen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, crap. Man, you know I'm at Beats Out Lost. He was out here playing Tetris on his spare time, you huh? Know, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, it's just. I don't know, man. It's just the, the feeling of music, the frequencies. Like, I always stuck to that formula of music. For, Not the popular music, but music that could change the mind and change, you know, change how we feel, think, move, and act. In this world, you, you you need some type of change. Somebody has to do something, bro. Something different. Yeah, something different or something that makes something more progressive after we are gone. Nobody thinks about that. Everybody thinks about the now and how good they want to be but don't want to pass it on to nobody else. And I, that's, that's the part of the music I don't want to be a part of. Popular or not, rich or not, I can't do it. For sure. This shit you know, makes so. me want to light up a cigar. Let me just listen to you talk. Yeah, hell yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, so. You said facts. But no, but don't don't mm. go too deep in that because that's you messing up my questions, man. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you messing up my questions, okay, bro. Okay, All right. Okay. But no, uh, but I got a question for the both of you guys, though. Like, I think about, you know, sports, right? I yeah. love uh, watching sports, right? I love it. It's like it relaxes me, mm-hmm. but my kids, they're athletic, they have that gene, mm. but they refuse to watch any sports. They're born with a six pack, right? So, I'm just like, how can you learn the game if you're not a student of the game? Do you mm. guys feel, and I want to hear you start out with you, Tim, do you feel that you have to be a student of the game? To be great, should everybody know who Devin the Dude is? So everybody know who Scarface is? Um, they trying to pick up a mic? It's it's not, I mean, you, you should be a student of the game, but then it's like, you're a student of proximity. So let's say you're from, let's say you from St. Louis. If you're from St. Louis, you're more than likely gonna take that most popular artist, and that's the artist you're gonna study. That's the artist you're gonna become a student of. And then, or it could be whatever's hot. It can be the, so it can be the proximity or whatever's hot. You take a liking to it and you study it. And you study this person and you start to, mim- you, some some people mimic, some people, you know, and you become you you come into your own. You come you come into your own. Eventually you come into your own. A lot of people come into their own. But it's different types of students. Just like when we were in school, just like we was in school, you had different types of students. You had class clowns, you had dummies. It was a whole lot of dummies. Shout out to all the dummies I went to school with. That's right. Uh, I ain't gotta say y'all names. You niggas know y'all was dumb. You couldn't spell. But anyway. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, you you have different types of students, and 
with each type of student, they have a different type of talent. Now you have some students that have all around talent. You have some students that have ah, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but they average. Then you have your below average, and then you have the dummies, the ones who copy, the ones who don't want to have a certain type of individuality. They believe that copying and applying to them will give them a, the originality or the individuality, which it doesn't. But if that's how they feel, that's on them. However you feel, it's you. You know what I'm saying? I can give my opinion on something, but that doesn't make my opinion a fact. That's just how I feel about it. But it's different, like I say, it's different kinds of students. But it's a difference between a rapper and an MC. You know what I'm saying? Explain, what's the difference? A MC moves the tr moves the crowd, controls the crowd. A rapper just raps. A rap it, it, it's kind of like the word try. I've almost taken the word try out of my vocabulary because try means to do without feeling. So if I tell you, so if we talking and you say, hey, Tim, um, we need a song for the podcast. I can try. That means I'm gonna do it without feeling. If I do something without feeling and without actually putting forth the effort, I'm being disrespectful. That means I'm not honoring what's requested or I'm not mm -hmm. honoring what you're actually saying. I'm just gonna do it just to do it. And if the outcome is good, I'm cool. If the outcome is bad, I'm also cool. So that's why it, it, it you know, it, it's a, you know, a lot of people use the word try and I'll shout out to all the people that use the word try because you really don't give a fuck. <laughs> you really don't give a fuck. The word try is one of the most negative words you can hear because anytime somebody uses the word try, if you notice, they, they, they say it in a high pitch. They'll say, if you, you ask for something, hey, can you do it? I can try. you be like, bro, you don't care about how it's being done. So, so speaking on that though, like it, he he brings a very fucking interesting fact that I was like thinking on my way driving out here. But like, you know what's the 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 drug that is like popping bigger than cocaine and weed and all the mm -hmm. imagine the most high quality drug that you could think of. What's oh, I more? You what, tried it or no, 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 no. I'm just I, I'm just asking. Do you know Wait what's the minute. high? What's the biggest drug that's bigger than that? Yeah. What? Nobody. What no? is problems? Oh, problems. Stress. You know what I mean? Stress. So you know what I mean? Like we, we live in an environment that it's easy to point out a problem just to justify the lack of success, right? So we're we here like thinking that we're living our reality, but we really aren't. And I was telling him earlier today, like we think that we're living our reality, but the fact is, is that we're we're living what we're focused on. Mm -hmm. So now I have a question for both of you guys. Do you guys believe that? And what is, describe your focus. Kelly, you wanna, what's up with you? Mm -hmm. no, you All right, so for me, um, for me, it's a balance. In order to be successful, you have to have some kind of balance. As a human being, you have to have some kind of balance. There's no, there are no good things that happen to you without things of the opposite that happen to you. So you have to learn how to balance those things, how to react to those things, how to control your emotions, especially as men. As men, we should learn how to show emotion, but not live there. When you live there, then you become a person who is problem-based. People who are problem-based yeah, never focus on, focus on solutions. If you have friends that, you know, we all have friends that we talk to that every time they call you, they got a problem. <laughs> you call, hey, oh, man. You're like, bro, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just <laughs> not going good. You're like, bro, what's wrong? <laughs> man, she won't talk to me. Or it's, it's always some, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right. Because this person is problem-based. People who are problem-based are only going to focus on the problem. No matter how many solutions you give them, no matter how many opinionated solutions you give them, they're going to always reverse it all the way back to the problem. The problem. Yeah. And time. that's why we have to learn how to be solution-based people.
Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a, sometimes you have to seclude yourself from everybody. You have to pull yourself away and know that you have problems. First is locating the problem, acknowledging the problem, your availability to the problem because that's a part of your time and that's a part of your focus. Mm-hmm. So after that, after you've acknowledged and done everything else, you need to apply those to work on the problem. But people get caught up in stress and people get caught up in the problem, so they get stuck. And when they get stuck... No progression. Everyone, every one of us is a, is a, a king of some sort to our circle of people. Mm-hmm. If you've ever, you ever heard, I had a homeboy, shout out to my, my dog, Mike Man. he tell me this all the time. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. crown. You have friends. You have friends. He has friends. He has friends. Where these people look to you for a certain type of guidance. And it's not that your life is better than theirs. It's not that you know more than them. It's the way you handle it. The way you come up with solutions. The way you don't focus on the problem. You might be a person, and you might be a person where you got a problem. You like, shh. What'd you say? Man, I'm finna go smoke me a blunt, drink me a beer, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna figure that shit out. But we sometimes don't even really have to figure it out, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think sometimes when we focus on some, obviously it's a problem for a fucking reason. You yeah. know what I mean? So that means it's time to move on and, and find a new um, opportunity that's gonna, you know, be a, a obviously a, basically what you learn from that particular situation that particular scenario and i I, I just think that learn. you some know people don't learn they, they, have to, they have to learn but but that's the thing i think it all comes down to your environment right facts, facts, your environment facts, so facts. like for example the, um you know there, there was like a research saying about like there's no such thing as like depression or anxiety because mm. the reality is 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 that that's all you're focusing on if you're feeling that way is because you're feeling like okay I'm, I'm anxious or all that but you're not stepping away from like okay i've learned from this to move on from there and, it, and it's crazy because a trauma mm-hmm. is a bruise yeah. Yeah. you're gonna heal from a bruise mm-hmm. you know what i mean but and the trauma's still there but it's a bruise bro yeah. you know it's gonna wipe out so yeah. it just comes down to what are you doing to heal that bruise and you correct because we have a gazillion and some cells in our body what we speak what we speak to ourselves what we speak what we speak out loud vibrates 100 mm-hmm. percent. so if i sit here if i sit here and i just keep telling myself i'm never gonna be shit, never gonna be shit, never gonna be shit, never gonna be it's gonna happen i'm i'm programming programming and vibrating and then i'm putting it into the air so even y'all are beginning to believe it and begin to look at me this way because it's vibrating. Right. So we have to be careful with how we talk to ourselves. The most important conversation is not the conversation that we have with each other. It's what we have alone. Because those conversations alone are what build you. Those are the builders. Those are the conversations when you decide to do something, you don't necessarily, you call people after you've already had a conversation with yourself. I guarantee you, before you decided on something, you was right. You may have been riding. You, mm-hmm. you on, you coming from somewhere? You, you know what? I'm, for, I'm gonna do it. I got this. Then what you do? You call your home. You gotta have that validation. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, because that's that's just that's just the you know what I'm saying. That's that's sort of the moral. That's the the moral support and the family support that some of you know what i'm saying that a lot of times we actually need and we don't get we really don't get from our actual family it's always the homeboy or the brother or the guard brothers you know it's not always the family and which it, it really doesn't matter because at the end of the day what says the most about you is your self talks about yourself how you treat other people not how you're perceived, 
not how everybody wants to look at you. I could give a fuck. I don't. I, can I cuss? I can yeah. cuss. You I'm sorry, you y'all. Yeah. But <laughs> fuck it. It's too, I, well, forget no, it. <laughs> it's too late. So, um, I I stopped worrying about people's perception about me a long time ago. Facts. I I've, I I'm going to always be who I am. You know what I'm saying? When we talked on the phone, it was we talked for what four hours, three yeah, when, hours. When you fell asleep. Oh, nah, it's my Let's leave that out though. Let's leave that out. <laughs> bro, <laughs> no, no, bro. I thought he was just playing. No, bro, I told I you he wasn't. You ain't hit it. <laughs> that boy was odd. I don't know what he was doing the night before. He must have been playing with Legos or something. <laughs> I don't know. Legos. I don't know what the fuck he was doing, but he was twenty four hours. But um, but um, for, like I say, for me, as y'all can see, I'm a very forward coming, straight, straightforward person. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But um, I believe in in order for us to manifest, mm-hmm. we have to first change our program and change how we talk to ourselves. The eyes and O's. Yeah, because everybody at this table can say they hate me. I still laugh at y'all. That's not going to change nothing for me. You can't change what's in here. Only I can change what's in here and what's in here. Because one of my OGs used to tell me, if it's not in here, it's not going to be out here. So changing our programming, first of all, because like you say, Mm -hmm. our environment can dictate what we feel about ourselves or how we see ourselves. Think think about your drive to work, right? And and I'm pretty sure everybody can relate to that, right? But have you ever noticed that you, you can be on your way to work, be talking to whoever, right, on the phone? But you, your body automatically knows what exit to take, what freaking turns to take, and you could be like going ape shit on that call. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could be like, "What the fuck?" Blah blah blah. Hold a quick left turn. You know, you turn. <laughs> like, hey, you know what I mean? Like, that's how hypnotized we are yeah. in this world, right? Because, yeah. like I said, reality's passing by. You're yes. just thinking on whatever the fuck you're thinking. Yeah. And the reality is, is, is that we're not living our reality. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's wild. Yeah, you right. Most deaf, most deaf. Look, let's bring it back to music real quick, though, right? (laughs) (laughs) We had a whole... Yeah, yeah, let's bring it back to the music real quick, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Killer, man, in your opinion, right? So everybody's talking about the streaming game. You've seen several reels where Mm -hmm. uh, Snoop has alluded to, like, yo, man, I get you a billion streams and I get a $1,000 check, you know? Um, Where does the math come from? Where did, who's calculating everything? Who puts the value in it? In your opinion, uh, us transitioning to from uh, physical sales, CDs, albums, and stuff like that, going to the streaming platforms, do you mm-hmm. believe that it's hurt the music game or helped the music game? It destroyed the music game. Destroyed it. <laughs> destroyed, destroyed it. it. <laughs> Say game over. Why you yeah. know? The Talk make, to us about the it. The artists make way less these days off their albums than what we used to have back in the day with physical CDs. We had more control over our ownership, our product and everything before hip hop became corporate. So, ooh boy, like once it went to digital, everybody a platinum artist now. Everybody <laughs> racking a million strings and a billion strings, but you going you From Bangladesh. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, bro. Like, you going you go on to YouTube, that YouTube got a hundred views, but it's not matching this and this. Yeah. Yo. It's like, it's, it's, the yeah. algorithm is broken now. Yeah. Like, everybody could look like a platinum artist, but like, it don't match in all areas of the music game. Oh sure. man. So it's like, it kind of like oversaturated everything. Numbers is the new platinum hit, not the song. You can say boop boop be doop, but you got like twenty million views. I'm like, for what? <laughs> <laughs> bro, Remember Kanye did a song called Poopity Scoop, Doopity Boop. He tricked everybody, and that song <laughs> was a troll. That was a troll song to Drake too, cause he, <laughs> cause he didn't want Drake to have that beat no more. So he's like, okay, I'm gonna put it out. Poopity no. Scoop, man. <laughs> And I wow. was very upset at that. I was like, Kanye, what was wrong with you? Like, <laughs> Poopity scoop, bro. Poopity scoop. Nah, bro. but the game changed so much, bro. Like, I used to be out there with artists and stuff, like, selling CDs out of trunk. It was fun back then, but it made you work harder towards the game and everything. 
Hey, OGs be needing therapy nowadays, huh? <sighs> <laughs> From Man. this shit, the way the, the game is like digital, you know what I mean? They were yeah. they were used to the whole little that records and that, that shit from was 90, so gone. What, 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 when they really start making that money, like ninety eight through oh five, with Murder Inc. and all that. I mean, you see I the say money maybe maybe early. like ninety three, bro, like yeah. ninety three, because that was when you know producers it, getting a hundred k for a yeah. Beat. Oh, no. you still got your AOL, AOL CD, huh? But that's yeah. not happening right now. You don't <laughs> no. think producers getting hundred k? I think so, no, it's no, only no. certain like, ones. It's, oh, it, it's, 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 it's it used to be they it. would they would get like okay, they would get maybe let's say they'll get fifty thousand for a walkthrough, and shout out to my my, my bro man Band Geek Hustle man. Hey, <laughs> I learned a lot from Big Bro, but that's my big brother, man, and he he really taught me a lot about the game and about the music business. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of times, you know, at, at, they would they were getting paid to just do walkthroughs or just do you know mm -hmm. little small things. But now it's like the producer has to do so much. And then they have to go through so much because the artists, a lot of the artists don't want to do good business or great or do, I ain't gonna say good business, do things the right way. Cause there's no such thing as doing good business. You do things the right way. If you, if a person comes to you for a service mm -hmm. and you know what I'm saying, you provide the service for them, you should be paid like you should be paid. However, it's mm -hmm. contractually agreed or a handshake, which is still a contractual agreement. But a lot of times you get this, okay, the artist get the beat, he make a hit, he make a bunch of money. Now the producer is put in a position to where they have to sue to get pay, rightfully paid. I have to spend money to get the money Sorry. that you owe me. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So that that makes it, you know, that made the game and then the labels started catching on also. They were spending so much money on the bigger artists yeah. that now they just look at it like, okay, you got a following? Cool, you got a following? We'll fuck with you. And that's what's been happening. That's what's been happening so, and, and they've been, you know, and I'm, I'm not gonna say that, mm -hmm. that they had that this is, hasn't been going on, but they continue to profit from minority murders, minority problems, minority whatever, mm -hmm. and control propaganda. Yeah, we continue to we continue to actually give them the opportunity to when we have social media, we have everything out here to be able to do these things on our own. But because uh, because it's a, a tougher route, a lot of people are like, man, I'd rather just get signed to a label. But then when you start looking at majority of the artists that we love, look at the type of deals they had to take just to get where they where yeah. they are now. Jadakiss, the lot you know, the locks as a group, mm -hmm. Mace. Um, Black Rob, uh, even Biggie, even Pac. But you don't think they, they it's kind of worth it? On. Like, th th think about the fact that, like, let's just say you made it, right? Yeah. You're on some Jay Z level, right? Yeah. So, don't you think that you need that type of influence in order to change the game? Mm -mm. This is why, because everybody's situation is different. Jay, it took Jay how long to get on? To a finally, re he was 30, what, 34, 35? Yeah, he was up there. He had been rapping him and since. Eminem was both. He was like 34, he had, I think. He had been rapping since 88. Yeah, with jazz on. Yeah, and he it, he was it was took, it, 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 it didn't take a major label. It was him and his friends putting the money together. But he rubbing shoulders with like NFL, like, yeah, that's, like that's owners, you know what I mean? That's but that's what I'm saying. Like, what, are you willing to take? And just yeah, leap, leap, but he leap. built, but see what he yeah. did was he had a plan. He had a plan. So you have to have a plan. You don't think he had to play along? I, maybe somewhat when he, when he became, when he started signing to, when he started, when he signed to a, a, another label, yeah. But when it was him and his label and his friends, no. He did what he wanted to do. And that's why that album, uh, what was that, Reasonable Doubt? That was why that album was so slept on. Because we chase the popular mm -hmm. and leave the authentic behind. And only to have to double back to the authentic. Because the popular doesn't last long. 
Just think about how many, just think about from 20, we'll say from 2011 till now, how many one hit wonder songs have you heard? Well, that's like every day. It's <laughs> been more of those, it's been more of those in this era than it ever would be or ever was mm -hmm. in the 90s. And they're not even timeless. And it's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, we can still go back and jam Diggable Planets. That song is is relatable mm -hmm. it's timeless yeah that's what you want to make as an artist exactly it's music yeah but who want and i I'm, I'm not being funny but i don't jam that sound pulling at the coop in the light i don't jam that that's that was a that was a a, a moment in time that was a wave mm -hmm. that was a wave that caught a wave diggable planets wasn't a wave you understand what i'm saying even even um um What's the what's the dude that song uh said a drift of memory? Uh PM Dunn, the dude that KRS oh, oh. shout out R.I.P. Yeah. to PM Dunn, but yeah, yeah KRS threw you yeah. off stage. But anyway, um <laughs> <laughs> say man, I'm just being honest, bro. I'm just being honest. I I, I can't help with some heart. That's just me. So yeah. PM Dunn. PM Dunn had two songs, Set a Drift of Memory and Die Without You. Those songs you can put on today. Oh, you sure can. That's what I'm saying. I just listened to it last week. Music like that, it's not that it lasts long, it stands the test of time. Mm -hmm. Because when you make timeless music, there's no time frame. Nowadays, it's microwave. It's mm, Ice Spice or yeah. whatever. <laughs> Leave her alone. I've never heard one song from her. Like, that's horrible. <laughs> Bro, I, I think I heard a piece of a song of of you know like a whole song and I was I, I absolutely he was like <laughs> I mean, confirmed I know that she you know I know she make a certain kind of music for a certain kind but of she ain't Cardi B you know what I mean yeah Cardi but nice she don't, but she Cardi don't gotta nice. be though yeah she Cardi yeah. nice though okay so I, I'm kind of like I would say I'm kind of torn right because like like you were saying like where did Jay Z start where yeah. Jay Z is now yeah right so we got to give artists a chance also to evolve. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you hating Ice Spice now, not saying you particularly, but you anybody who listen and be like, oh man, that's trash, that's garbage. What is it doing for the culture? Yeah. But let's give her time to, to build. mature, to exactly. build. And, and you you know what I'm saying? She she start out as Ice Spice and turned into Oprah Winfrey. Then we applauding her. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Creating Facts. her own network. But that's like she, saying like you approve of Bad that's Barbie. Like, you know no, what I mean? Catch me outside. Say, like imagine, no. like that's that's the type of culture that we're fucking in that we're allowing this bullshit. I like, get it, I get what you're saying, <laughs> but you saying is it worth it? What? You gotta have that long, that that long term plan. Like yo, yo I'm gonna play your game. I'm gonna play your I'm game a, for a little bit, but then yeah. I, now that it's I it's all about market, issue, bro. I don't yeah. even think some, none of that matters. Some artists come and do that. Some don't change though. And I'm some, not changing. No, I'm that. not. Change. We don't want you to change, Tim. I'm never gonna change. I'm talking the ones who. Like, like we were just talking about Sauce Walker. Yeah. He came in the game. Ooh, we pimped it. Boom, boom, boom. Then he slowly went back to his old self. Yeah. But he mixed it with the new, you yeah. know, what he did. You know, the, poet, the poet mixed with the, the pimp gang, you know. Yeah. And, and this. Yeah, it blew beautiful. people's minds. Beautiful. I just, I, I'm, listen. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Mike Tyson. You know, I'm going to shout out a lot of people. Shout out Mike Tyson. I'm a big fan of Mike Tyson. Before I ever grew hair, I used to get Mike Tyson haircuts. <laughs> that's the way That's the way I rap. I'm going to come out firing on all cylinders. I'm not going to waste your time. You, know, you only get a certain amount of time to get people's attention. So in that amount of time of, to get somebody's attention, I need to be at my best. And I feel like that a lot of times people get complacent. Can we throw like a little sample verse? No, you know man. I mean? no, 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 messing no, it up. No, it's coming. No, no. Be okay. patient. <laughs> it's coming. Be patient. <laughs> but no, but no, Tim. Like on the real though. Like so, when we were talking on the phone, you was talking about superpowers, right? Yeah. And but to tie into the superpowers, we was also talking about freedom. Yeah. All right. And I love the way you explain your definition. Of freedom yeah and how that is your superpower yeah hey and share share some of that with the world go ahead Tim so for me um I've always battled for my freedom it had nothing to do with the you know normally people talk about slavery freedom it was always mental freedom 
the mental freedom is what gives a child the opportunity to know that I can choose anything I want to be and be great at it. But when you take away that option from a child, then they narrow it down and it becomes a what's in my proximity that I can become or I can be to make enough money because I want this. I want what he has. I want what he has. I didn't want what everybody else had. I wanted freedom because I knew that having mental freedom was more important than any dollar, than any, any other thing you can think of because when you have mental freedom, you're able to see things from a different perspective. And you're able to have your own, have your own, you know, have your own way about things. So whereas people see, view, people view things from a sense of here, they're walking. I'm viewing things from above so I can see everything. That doesn't mean that I know everything. That doesn't mean that I'm able to, to see everything, but I have a great view of everything. So if I am looking way right here, I can actually look and see. So I need that freedom. I need that freedom. And that's what I fought for as a child all the way up until now. Keeping my freedom, being able to have the options. We sometimes, we sometimes, um, we let people, um, how you say, that we let people Marginalize us. Okay. They marginalize us too. Okay, if you rap like this, that's the only way you rap. No, that's not the only way I rap. I choose that because I have freedom. Man. I choose this. Thanks. You can't make, you can't marginalize me. That's why you can't say, oh, well, he sounds like this or he sounds like that. You choose to do that. I don't sound like anybody. I don't sound like anybody. Nobody rap. Nobody raps like me, and that's not to be some kind of super overconfident person. But there's, I don't rap like anybody. That's the unique part of my freedom. Mm -hmm. I'm able to go in the booth and say, "This is what this song is about," and then rap it. And then y'all, I, I then I give it to the people and say, "Here, figure it out." Figure out what I'm talking about. Let's see if you can figure out what's wrapped up in everything. Because it's, it's not just about being able to rap. It's the messages you leave. It makes you want to study again. Like, man, what do you mean by that? And you go try to decode the words. And I used to go on Genius.com a lot. Mm. Trying to decode Pusha T and everybody. Like, people hate Pusha T, but... But all he do is talk about drugs. I said, bro, that's not easy. He's not <laughs> no. talking about drugs. He's talking about no. his life through yeah. cocaine metaphor. <laughs> yeah. And people, like, they stuck on the level one. We down on the level eight. Like, dang, I didn't know he went through that. But he talking about drugs. He, he did that on his album. But nobody don't know it. Yeah. Because he using the wrestler names and bars as coke and, and drug yeah. uh, metaphors. And I'm like, he's so wrong for that. But it's it's a lot. I, like the metaphors is crazy. Man, like, shout out to my shout out to my brother Bag Geek Hustle again, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I got a I had a song where I used I used like uh, all the rappers like a lot. Well, not all rappers, but rapper names, rapper songs, uh, rapper uh, uh, label names, and I just used them all as bars. Just Cause for like I say, for me, me having that freedom to do what I want to do, it's no limit to what I can think of or what I'm thinking of. I have the space, and just like y'all, y'all have the space. Y'all got all the space to talk about whatever it is y'all want to talk about and do whatever y'all want to do because this is y'all's freedom, and we have to be. When we get that freedom, we have to be careful with who we let into our freedom because some people come into your freedom to hold you in captivity, but it's a certain type of captivity. 
And then after they hold you in captivity, they start <laughs> marginalizing you and breaking you down into, well, y'all just do this right here. Yeah, bird oh, is a word. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you can't the say bird, this. The bird, bird, bird. Can't bird, say bird. This. Try, 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 try this. Don't, Yo, don't say this, but try this. Man, <laughs> listen, you wouldn't believe how Take many. Take the saxophone out this beat. It's, yeah. too, it's too soulful. You wouldn't believe how many times I've had to, I've had my verse taken off songs. I've had people do me like this. They sit in the studio and just be like, "Absolutely not." <laughs> like, nah, bro, we're not doing that. Like, we come out, uh, come out, come out right quick. Come out the <laughs> hey, bro, for real, negative. Yeah, for yeah. real. Come out of compliance. Take it, take it yeah. down a notch, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> turn this shit down. Yeah, yeah. Turn, yeah. turn that down, okay? But with him, with Killer, you know, and with my my brother, you know, working with them. Um, to be an intelligent person, to be a smart person, to be able to take the things that you take and put together, you have to be crazy. And the person you work with has to be crazy also because mm -hmm. they have to be able to interpret and understand, not everything, but understand the, the core things and the vision to yeah. be able to build around it or for me to be able to build on what they've made. So that takes a lot of time, a lot of crazy conversations, a lot of crazy verses. Hey, so, so, so with that being said, describe your vision. My vision? No, but, but no, no, no. I, I, I don't want to hear what the, the, the actual narrative of it. I want to I wanna hear like what you feel. What I feel? about that vision like just imagine yourself forget about us being in the room what does that vision look like go download my project that's what i can tell you if you want to see my vision you download my project i've already put it in the words and it's describe the feeling it's, fr it's freedom it's freedom it's I made a promise, man, I, I tell y'all this. I lost a child. And um, before I lost my child, when my son's mama was pregnant with him, I made a promise to him while he was still in there. Daddy's gonna put out a project and I'm gonna go crazy. So that's what I did. It was about the freedom and the promise I made. I don't believe in breaking promises. We're men. If you say you're gonna do something, mm -hmm. do it. If you can't do it, let me know. Communicate with each other. Let's be more communi communicative. If I can't make something, I'm gonna tell you, hey bro, I'm not gonna be able to make it. I can't do it. But I'm going to do my damnedest to make sure that any promise I make that I follow through and for me, that project is my way of honoring my child by being myself and using my freedom to be myself and having someone who understands why I'm doing what I'm doing and having friends who understand mm -hmm. why I'm doing what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? And I don't just do this for myself. I do this for also for people who have mental health. A lot of artists have mental health issues. They go up and down, but money will make you think that a person is cool. If I came in here and I was going through all kind of shit, yeah, you tripping. Yeah, you thought I wasn't gonna say nothing, huh? Yeah, yeah I stopped mid sentence on your ass. What you over watching? <laughs> you better not be watching porn during this motherfucking interview, bro. No, no. What kind of porn you watch? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Hello. Yeah, I'm. I'm still here, y'all. But um, God, man. yo, everything you're saying, I think that's the reason why they give you guys guns in Texas. You know what I mean? That passion. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna trust somebody with that fucking mindset. You know what yeah. I mean? I like, mean. I'm gonna shoot you if you make me shoot you. Yeah, and that's and that's me in a nutshell. That's me in a nutshell. I'm gonna shoot you if well anyway. If you make me, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm not. A, I don't have time to you know be getting my gun taken and now I gotta walk around with a slingshot or some shit. But um, 
uh, for me, like I say, for me, bro, just uh, when you get a chance, a free chance, just listen to the music. Listen to the album. Mm-hmm. And when you listen to the album, um, well, matter of fact, let's back up. Let's let's put it. Let's oh, I'm put sorry. Put it in order. Yes, sir. What's the album's name? What's the project's name? Oh, the name of the project is Brian Pillman. The Loose Cannon, and uh, it's basically a story of a, a, a one of the wrestlers that was forgotten. 